Just imagine your day flowing as smooth as butter. And whatever comes your way, you'll know how to handle it the right way without overly reacting. And since our days are made of macro and micro decisions and also habits, by the end of this video, you'll discover five easy yet effective habits to implement into your life today. Just in case you stumbled upon my video and we haven't met yet, my name is Carmen and I make sales and mindset videos for the emotionally reactive millennials. Emotionally Reactive Millennials Of course, there's a lot of habits you can adopt, but I specifically stuck with five. That way it's not overwhelming and you can take one step at a time to put these into your life. But these little habits cover a lot of content within it and I'll go in depth about it. So let's just get into it. Habit number one, adopting a high level of self-awareness. Having a high level of self-awareness could mean a variety of different things. A lot of times for me, I realized that emotions drove me to do things that I don't want to do and it's not who I identify with, but the emotions just took over. If you can relate to that, drop a comment down below. No need to be ashamed, we all have our own problems, but that's why we're fixing it. It could be, I know I'm supposed to be doing something, but I don't feel like doing it, so I don't do it. I need to be aware of that. And it also could be I'm portraying a certain action or message to someone but it doesn't come off the same way as I'm putting it off as they receive it. So I just need to be aware of that. With that, of course, on this journey, there are a lot of things that are working and not working. So it's being self-aware to understand that, okay, this is not working. Maybe we should try something else. So that's three points, but I would say the most important point that helped me is being self-aware of what I'm consuming. I'm sure you don't need a long explanation of me blabbing on of filling your mind and body with good things, but since my mind, and probably your mind as well because you're smart, is running a million miles per minute, we don't need extra blockage and content blocking all the goodness, okay? Number two is very powerful. It's putting yourself in the right environment. A wise man once told me, if you want to see your future, just look at the five people you surround yourself with. Another thing could be just following people on social media and the content you're consuming. Your body is constantly taking that in. How could I forget about your room, your desk, or your car? A cluttered space is a cluttered mind. You definitely want to surround yourself with what you want to become, the people and things that make you happy and a better person, not dragging you down. And a few things that I do that really help is by not checking my phone until I'm done with all my work. Checking my phone just leads me down a whole different track. And with that, that allows me to hone my craft daily. That's not number three, but honing your craft daily is definitely something that a lot of successful people do. Consistency is a major key. Number three is dropping your ego. Some of these bullets under the big habit might sound very familiar, but that's because I implement it and practice it in every area of my life. And I'm sharing this with you because it has changed my life so much and I hope it can help you out as well. When you, me, anyone is talking, we're already saying stuff that we already know. We're just repeating those things. It's not really taking in anything new. So one thing I learned is just to shut the fuck up. Okay, I know that was harsh. When we be quiet, we're able to hear more and we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. By not talking so much, we're able to absorb more, therefore not closing off the opportunity to become better. From there, of course, dropping ego means going to fail, fail at some things like making some of my videos. <laughs> It wasn't so good, they're getting better. That's a good example. I like to self roast a lot, okay? It's no hard feelings. It's good to have fun. Also, by being a good listener, you're always a student because you're always taking in things, whether you agree or disagree with someone's perspective, you see a new perspective and that gives you a whole new world of opportunities and unlimited possibilities. Seeing new perspectives, it kind of relates to number two, where you're self-aware and know when to ask for help. When you need that help, you can go to books and just keep an open mind about it drop the ego because the more you know the more you know you don't know trust me i had a lot of ego before it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up 
Number four is having a set morning routine. This covers so many things that I can't even name it all. Just having a set morning routine, you're taking control of your day and you're setting the tone of exactly how your day is gonna go. It's gonna help you be consistent, feel better, get more done, just be more organized. And a morning routine for me is a lot of writing. I write down my thoughts while I journal, dealing with emotions while I do that, and plan out my day, organize, boom, 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 things I need to get done, and just check that off. Take that morning time to meditate, breathe, slow down your smart little mind for a little bit. You're gonna jump out of bed and just be more proactive. And if you're someone who kind of loves to lay in bed, I love to lay in bed too. Have huge goals, but you love being in your comfy bed under the sheets, I'm gonna drop a little card here and go ahead and click on the video to learn how to jump out of bed early morning pumped with motivation. A little shameless self plug, but I'm just sharing with you because I care about your success and it's important to win that first battle of the day because you know, our devil side will try to talk us out of a lot of things. And number five, this is a big one. A lot of these do tie into each other, but it's to take responsibility. A big problem I had when I was overthinking a lot, not that I don't overthink anymore, but there was one part of my life where I was spiraling and it was just creating a lot of problems and feeling sorry for myself when I didn't need to. Once you take the responsibility back, you take the power to change and there's no one else to blame but yourself for your actions or whatever had happened to you. Of course, not everything is your fault, of course not, but it is our fault to how we react to these things. From being happy and also depressed, I much prefer being happy. So when we are thinking these bad things or feeling sorry, whatever, we're just manifesting more and more of those. So it's just a click of a mindset just to take a new perspective, take a step back. I know it's easier said than done, but take a step back, analyze the situation, see what you can take responsibility for, even if you think it's 0% your fault. You're just in so much pain, I felt it before, use that as your strength. That will fuel you far. These five little tips, inevitably, it'll help you manage your emotions better and not react so much, not overthink so much. Just have this set routine and follow it. Make a plan and just go through with it. There will be moments where you'll feel weak and those are the times where you need to stop, ask yourself, I'll, I'll give you a role play, this is what I do. Like, Carmen, what the fuck are you doing? That's literally what I do to snap myself out of it. Do whatever it takes to snap yourself out of it. I hope you found one thing insightful from this video. Drop a comment down below. Which one of these five things will you implement in your life that you find most useful? Oh, and if you found me funny, <laughs> entertaining, interesting, learned anything, or you just want to be my friend, go ahead and subscribe and hug. I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to spread love and I'll see you in my next video.